Hello, STEM Nation. Jeff here, and welcome to episode number 74 of STEM on Fire, where we interview practicing professionals and college students in the area of science, technology, engineering, and math to help guide students interested in STEM careers. If you like what you hear, please share with a friend. Now let's get fired up today with our guest, Harriet, and I hope our chat will help you ignite your passion towards a STEM career. Harriet earned a degree in mathematics and is a certified financial risk manager. And after some time as an analyst, she went back to school and is currently a graduate student in planetary science. Welcome to the show, Harriet. Fill any gaps and share a bit of your personal life. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Jeff. Um, I think you covered it off perfectly. Um, my, my background is in, in maths. I used to work in finance for a number of years before I realized that wasn't what I wanted to do with my re the rest of my life. So I've gone back to school and now I study the solar system, which is fantastic. All right, Harriet. So let's dig right in, right? So planetary science and studying the solar system. And you're going, I believe you're in graduate school, uh, going mm -hmm. for your master's and maybe possibly a PhD. What comes after that when you get a degree in planetary science? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And actually, it's something that kind of held me back for a long time before I decided to make the jump into graduate school. Because honestly, I really wasn't aware of the number of different opportunities that there are available if you want to go into a subject like planetary science. Um, I've always been fascinated by space and astronomy, but um, when I was in high school, I kind of considered that that was something I had to do as a hobby, a side gig, you know, rather than be my day to day job, um, which is why I ended up working in finance. But the more I spent getting involved in STEM and space related activities, the more I realized that there's a whole host of different things that you can do with that kind of degree. So, I, you know, a couple of examples of, of things that I've been considering and there are options out there is, you know, you can go into academia, you can become a planetary scientist where your full time job is to learn fun facts and research uh, the solar system and learn things and discover things that no one has ever known before, which is incredibly exciting. Um, but there's also, you know, a whole host of other things you can do. You could go and work for a space agency like NASA. You could work on um, work on a number of different projects that they have that are specifically related to solar system exploration. You could go work for a commercial company. There's some really exciting private space companies that are uh, up and running right now. One example is a company called Planet, and they have a whole host of satellites orbiting the Earth, and they take uh, high-resolution imagery of the entire Earth every single day. And there's a whole host of, you know, Earth-related science observation um, research and analysis that can be done with that kind of data. And we really need planetary scientists to be able to understand what's going on and to be able to help answer important questions. So that's just the starters in terms of, you know, different things that you can do. For me, it's been a really useful stepping stone in terms of transitioning from my previous career in finance into now what I want to go into, which is working more in the space industry. So once I wrap up my master's by the end of this uh, end of this year, I'm going to be going to work for a company called Astroscale, which is trying to solve the problem of satellite debris. So we have a whole bunch of satellites in space. They are kind of clogging up the space around the Earth. And the company that I'm joining is going to be trying to solve that problem and make space more sustainable. And that's not directly related to the planetary science uh, classes that I've been taking. But, you know, any kind of career and, and background in STEM is incredibly valuable. It teaches you so many different transferable skills that you can bring into, you know, any different uh, area of space or science that you find interesting. So, Harriet, thanks for that great overview. And, and you're right, because if my kids who are in college now and, and just about ready to graduate came to me in high school and said, hey, I'm thinking of going for planetary science, as a parent, I would have said, I, I don't know about that, right? Because... I'm just not aware of the opportunities available. So if there is somebody in high school thinking about, you know what, I really love the solar system. I really want to learn more about it. But what can I really do with it from a job perspective? Where would you go find more information about this? Yeah, that's a really good question. And actually, that was the exact same reaction that my mom had when I said that I was going to be leaving my uh, safe and stable job in a bank to go and study planets. I think she thought I was a little bit crazy. Um, but really what... What changed it for me was 
taking a little bit of time to look at what opportunities there were out there and and realizing that actually there was a whole host of things that you could do with that that skill set so you can in and in terms of finding those opportunities and, and figuring out what's going on there's a number of different ways you can do that um, a few kind of really specific examples of things i'd recommend for high school students who are thinking about going to college um, is look at organizations in your high school or in the colleges that you're looking to apply for that will be able to, you know, give you exposure to real science and STEM projects through the program. So a fantastic example of that is an organization called SEDS, which stands for Students for Exploration and Development of Space. They're a chapter based organization which um, have representatives and chapters in a whole host of uh, universities across the US and across the world now. And they do a number of different, you know, extracurricular projects um, on a whole range of things related to space, and planetary science and engineering, you know, to build up that skill set and give people a little bit of an exposure of what that kind of work involves. Another organization that I'm very heavily involved in and I recommend people check out is the Space Generation Advisory Council. So for me, that was really instrumental because I, through that program or through that organization, I met a whole host of like-minded space enthusiasts from across the world who were pursuing that passion that I shared in a fantastic variety of different ways. So I've met, you know, lawyers who specialize in space law or journalists or people who work in business in the space industry or communications, um, project management, engineering, scientists, all these kind of different opportunities that are out there if you're interested in something like planetary science or space. Um, so that's that's the kind of kind of key piece of advice that I would have is, is stay curious search out for those cool organizations or opportunities that will give you more um, exposure in the field that you're interested in. And also go out and talk to people, you know. Um, on the whole, people are incredibly friendly and welcoming. People love talking about their stories and their careers and where they've come from and how they've got to where they are. Um, and that's a fantastic way to, you know, to try and find someone who may have taken a similar path to, to what you want to do. So thanks for that, Harriet, and you you can check the show notes on stemonfire.com. All the links will be in the show notes, so you, you can go there and click on those. And, you know, STEM Nation, we talk about building your network. The network is so important, and Harriet touched on that where, you know, talk to like-minded people. So if you go to the show notes, you're going to find Harriet's LinkedIn profile. You can click on that, connect with her, and say, hey, Harriet, I heard you on STEM on Fire and I'd like to chat with you about planetary sciences. And and Harriet would be would be open to, to working with you on that. But I have another question, Harriet. Is you know, you, you got your bachelor's in math, and then you went on for planetary science. So if somebody's thinking, yeah, I think I like the planetary sciences, and if they go down that route as a bachelor's degree and they get through it and they're like, you know what, I really don't like it, it feels like not that employable to me as a dad. How important is it to to start out in planetary science for a bachelor's versus going for it as a master's degree? Yeah, sure. That's a, that's a really interesting question. And I think the my honest answer to this is there is no right way of doing things, you know. And the, the biggest piece of advice I would have for any any students listening is follow the things that you're most passionate about and opportunities will come up in that field. At the same time, you've got to think about what are the skills that are necessary for the career that you might want to go into. And that's where really any STEM degree is going to be absolutely invaluable. You learn about critical thinking. You learn about reasoning your argument, arguments using evidence. You learn to be organized, think consistently and be able to explain clearly and concisely what it is that you're doing and why. And so those are the kind of skills that you're going to get from any type of STEM degree, be it engineering, math or planetary science. So I would say even though, you know, the, the specific knowledge that you're going to be learning in a planetary science degree might not be directly relevant to a, a degree outside that field, there's still a huge number of transferable skills that you'd gain through that process that would be incredibly valuable. Um, and then, you know, touching on the fact that I came in from a maths degree. That was something that was 
uh, kind of hard, you know, there was a lot of background that I didn't have when I came into my master's program. Um, although, you know, the math degree gives you the tools, I didn't have a lot of that knowledge base that I had to pick up really, really quickly. So there's different ways of going about things. I, I would personally recommend a an engineering or math major to, you know, to provide that really strong like foundation in, in the toolkit that you need. But that's just my personal preference. And there's plenty of other ways of doing it. And as long as you're enjoying the journey, that is the most important thing. Yeah, th Harriet, that's great advice. Thank you for all that. And, and very well said. Um, so let's dig into something that is, is very specific. And what is your area of expertise? Yeah, sure. So currently in my master's program, I am working on two well, I'm currently wrapping up two different uh, research projects that I've been involved in throughout the last year and a bit. Um, the first is I am doing computer simulations of storms on the surface of Jupiter. So the Juno mission is a, well, Juno is a spacecraft that is currently in orbit around Jupiter. It's been there for about oh, maybe two years now, and it's been bringing back these incredible images of Jupiter in a way that we've never really seen it before. And one of the things that we've discovered about Jupiter is it has these incredibly regular arrangements of cyclones or storms at the poles of, of Jupiter. So, for example, at the South Pole, there is one storm in the middle, right at the South Pole. And then around it, there are five storms, like organized in like a perfect pentagon shape. It's really incredible. I'll have to send you a picture to put up on the website. Yeah, that'd be um, great. Uh, but, you know, this is the kind of thing that, that planetary scientists live for, you know, discovering things that you couldn't have even dreamed of. And I saw this image in a class I was taking last year. My professor is on the, the science team for the Juno mission. And so we got, you know, a sneak preview of some of the data that was coming back. And when I saw this image, I just thought, wow, I would love to learn more about what on earth is going on. And so that's formed the, the basis of one of my research projects. I've been doing computer simulations to try and recreate the, the conditions that we see on Jupiter to try and understand why we get such a regular arrangement of storms, because we would expect all of these sort of storms to, to merge together into one giant storm. And they don't. They stay in this really cool pattern. Um, and so that's something that I'm, I'm trying to figure out. So here, we're going to change gears here a little bit and tell us a story of an aha moment that you had that you turned into success or something that you realized along the way. Yeah, sure. So one example I have, which was really about how I transitioned from a, a maths degree and, and working in finance to, to going into planetary science, because I was working in finance for, for a number of years. Uh, I enjoyed my job, but I realized that I wasn't passionate about the underlying field. And I'd always loved space and astronomy. So I was looking for new ways and new opportunities to get more involved in the field. And I was living in New York at the time, and I saw a conference that was actually taking place at Caltech, which is where I now study. And it was all about using statistical techniques and methods to discover exoplanets. These are planets that are orbiting other stars. Um, and this sounded really interesting. It was a subject that I was I was really, really excited about. And I decided to to sign up to the conference, having basically no background in um, in planetary science or astronomy at that point, just a real interest in, in learning more. And so I, I went to the conference. It was a, a week long in Pasadena and I realized when I was there when essentially the, the format of the conference was a week of presentations from different professors, graduate students, researchers across the field of exoplanets, but using statistics. And I realized that the, the tools and techniques that these exoplanet researchers were using for the, the discovery of these new planets were the same tools that I was using in finance to analyze the the variability of risk within the financial system. And, and that was really an aha moment for me because I, I realized actually that there was a lot of overlap between 
well, I mean, maybe not a lot, of, a lot of overlap, but there was overlap between what I've been doing in finance and what I wanted to do in planetary science. And that really gave me the confidence to to know that even though I hadn't spent years and years studying planetary science, I still had some of the skills and, and, and tools that I needed to to prove to um, a, a graduate school that, that I could that I could do a planetary science master's program. And that's really interesting, Harriet, right? Because you hear a lot of kids talk about, you know, math, I'm never going to use the math. But I'll tell you what, everything always seems to come back to math. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it really does, you know. And so when I finished my, my math degree, I thought, you know, I'm never going to take any exams again. I'm done. I don't want to think about maths anymore. Um, and actually, you know, it's been inc completely invaluable. Um not just the the things you learn, but I think what's so useful about maths is it's it's a toolkit, it's a set of techniques, and it's a way of thinking, right? Maths is incredibly logical, and it trains you to uh, be organized in your thinking and and try and solve a problem in a very uh, constructive way. And that way of thinking of of you know developing those those ideas and those tools has been, you know, absolutely invaluable for me for, for everything that I've done since. Absolutely. So learn that math, understand what the math is saying, and, and stick with it. And we're going to we're gonna pivot here real quick. And just, Harriet, if you could give us one tip that you wish you knew when you're heading off to college when you're 18. Oh, yes. So um, when I was applying for colleges, I again, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. You know, to be honest, I don't really know what I want to do with the rest of my life now, but that's OK. Um, and so when I was choosing colleges or what to study, it's a little bit different in the UK where I'm from. You have to de decide on your major before you apl even apply to your schools. So you really get set down this uh, path of your, your career being defined very, very early on. And that was a kind of challenge for me because I found a lot of different things interesting and I had no idea exactly what it was I wanted to do. So I chose maths because it felt like a very general subject that could be applied to anything. Uh, I, I think that was a fantastic choice. I'm, I'm really glad I did. It, it set me up fantastically. Um, but at the same time, I wish I'd had more opportunities within uh, college to explore different areas of, of science and technology. I didn't even know that engineering was a degree when I was applying to school. You know, I thought it meant being a car mechanic and that wasn't really my thing. But, you know, in the last year, I've actually taken an aerospace engineering class while I'm at Caltech studying planetary science. Um, and that has been so interesting. And so I wish I'd had a little bit more exposure to other areas of STEM when I was doing my college degree. So I would encourage other people to, you know, try different things out and, and see what you find most interesting. Yeah, STEM Nation, you know, that's why we're doing this podcast is because I talk to people and like Harriet's saying, she was not even really aware of engineering as, as a degree. And, and that's just, you know, getting the word out on the, on the podcast, sharing it with other people. Please share it because there's people out there that have no idea what's available. You might think they do, but they don't. And thanks for that, Harriet. And we're going to head right into the lightning round. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so the best piece of advice I think I've ever received was at a conference I went to earlier this year. And the advice that the, the speaker gave was, don't be the person that says no to yourself. And that's kind of a weird statement, um, but essentially what, what she was trying to say, and I think it's fantastic advice, is that don't be the person, like don't hold yourself back because you think you can't do something, you know? You miss 100% of the shots that you don't make. So there is no point um, holding yourself back or not applying to something because you're not sure if you're going to get it, you know? Wait for someone else to tell you that you can't do something and then go out and prove them wrong anyway, you know, but that that kind of attitude and advice really struck me because I realized that, you know, I almost didn't apply to Caltech to, to go to grad school because I thought there is no way I'm going to get into this college. No way. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the experience. I don't have the, the background. Uh, all these different things. And I was really, really close to not applying. And 
um, eventually did and, and got in. But if I'd have listened to that little nagging voice in the back of my head, I would have, um, I wouldn't have done it and I wouldn't be where I am now. Yeah, you'd be hunkered down in a cube in New York still doing finance. <laughs> <laughs> and a personal habit, Harriet, that contributes to your success. Um, I think for me, it's being very, very organized. Um, I like to keep my uh, my life quite structured. I like to plan out what it is I'm going to do, and I like to plan. So all those different things come together and, and help keep me on track. Yeah, absolutely. Be organized. And Harriet, we're about ready to close out here. You've, you've provided tons of value along the way, but we're going to ask for one more as a parting piece of guidance, and then we'll say goodbye. Oh, gosh. I mean, a parting piece of advice, I'd just say, is, is have fun, you know, and enjoy the subject you're su studying. Don't worry too much about exactly where it's going to take you because you really never know where it's going to where you're going to end up. If you love space and you love law, then you can go and be a space lawyer. Right. And you can have a background in either of those things and still be valuable in that field. Um, you know that. So there's so many different things out there. Uh, so don't forget to enjoy the journey. Absolutely. And with that, Harriet, we'll say goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed that chat today with Harriet. You can head over to stemonfire.com, check out the show notes for all the links, and subscribe to the email list to keep up the latest happenings. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast player and share it with a friend. Tune in next week we talk with Elizabeth, who is a civil engineer. Until next time, I hope this chat has helped ignite your passion 